Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome to a new day of the Elder Scrolls Arena. It is now the second of Hearthfire. Uh, tomorrow is the third of Hearthfire, which is Towers and Tallows, which I believe is where you can get half price magical items. So that might be something to look into. I don't even know if there's anything that I can actually buy, but, um, what is it? It's 4.30 in the morning. I'm not really over encumbered right now. Not as much as I thought I was going to be. Can't really remember what I did yesterday. It's kind of hard to reinforce what I did during Sunday because I don't talk during it. But, um. Uh. I don't even know where I am. <laughs> am I in a random battle somewhere? I mean, a random dungeon somewhere? I honestly don't know where I am. That's awesome. Um, uh, all I know is I'm hiding in a corner somewhere. Oh, I was... Oh, hello! Hello. Alright, I'm just gonna go back to my corner. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's been a while since I've done any blogging, because, uh, well, Saturday was the 31st of the month, and there's no 30... 30 there's only 30 days in the uh, month of Arena. And, uh, yesterday, well, of course, was a shut-up and play, so, um, I've still got that follow-up. Yeah, yesterday I had this glitch where I was doing some missions, and the followers were, like, staying, and I couldn't get rid of them. Shit, am I, am I, do I actually have a mission right now, or have I done them all? I think I've done that already, yeah. Because I just wanted to, oh, whoa, whoa, that's not good. Wait, just try that again. Oh, no. Oh, lordy. Wait, is it just me or did that thing get smaller? Maybe it's just me. Oh, oh, she's back. Okay, good. So, um, what's been going on? There was a really big ass typhoon uh, over the weekend uh, in Japan. Well, it didn't really get anywhere. It was like just north, north, uh, west of Japan, I guess you could say. And it was, it was heading our way, and we had some pretty nasty weather. It's pretty heavy rain and thunderstorms and all that good fun stuff. Uh, but it looks like the, the typhoon sort of dissi dissipated into nothingness, so there's no real fear from there. One thing I did want to talk about today was Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate. Now, I love Dead or Alive 2. Dead or Alive 2 is... Arguably one of my favourite games, certainly one of my favourite games of uh, PS2. Um, I don't know, it's, it's one of my favourite fighting games. Like, Dead or Alive 2, I'm pointing out very clearly, but back when I had a PS2, back in the beginnings of uh, when I had a PS2, I had Dead or Alive 2 and I had Burnout 2. And these were like, these were the games that Blackjack, Avo, and myself played. It was just basically Dead Alive 2, um, Avo and I, we played constantly. Avo always chose Tina, I almost always chose Kasumi. Um, and we just constantly fight each other. Um, then we'd all three of us loved Burnout 2. I think we all had the game. Uh, Ava didn't have a PS2, he had an Xbox, and he had the Xbox version, which had, like, some additional skins, or something like that. Um, but, but, um, yeah, so there was pretty much those two games, and they are etched into my memory. And this is where I got this idea that the second game in a series is always the best. Because Dead or Alive 1 wasn't much of a game. I mean, it was a decent game for its time. Burnout 1 as well, although this discussion shouldn't be about Burnout, but whatever, we're talking about Burnout now. Um, Burnout 1 was a, it was a, it was our first introduction. It was a fun game. It was just ridiculously hard. Um, and there was just something missing from it. Dead Alive, uh, sorry, Burnout 2 just gave those things. Dead Alive 2 the same. It was just, the thing I liked about Dead Alive 2, it was a simple rock, paper, scissors system. And it was really easy to pull off any of those three things. You've got your punching and kicking. 
make your combos. That's your scissors. Then you've got paper, which is the equivalent of countering. Wait, that's not right. Wait. No, sorry. Paper is throws, uh, which is just a button. Um, and then countering uh, is your rock. So, countering would, of course, beat attack. Um, I don't know why I'm explaining this. We've already explained this when uh, we did we did uh, Dead or Alive 2 in, um, in the One Life Challenge series. But go watch that video, for goodness sake. But um, <laughs> not that it was that interesting, because we didn't get very far. Although, we had a couple of versus matches. Um, so, um, counters would beat attack. Uh, throws would beat counters. Uh, and then attacks would beat throws. And the, the key here was all three of those things were equally easy to pull off. I mean, as far as attacks were concerned, you could actually learn, like, combos and stuff like that. There, it wasn't that in-depth. It was fairly easy, especially Kazumi, which is my character, was pretty easy to pick up um, and do combos and stuff. Uh, but it wasn't really about that. It was about even if you, all you did was just a single kick, it would be enough. As long as you read your opponent, what they were going to do in the rock, paper, scissors formation, and countered that. Um, the issue that I've had with uh, subsequent games, Dead or Alive 3, Dead or Alive 4, there was Dead or Alive, even Dead or Alive Ultimate, which was actually a... I think it wasn't... They didn't really do anything with Dead or Alive 1, I don't think. They just re rehashed the game. Um, Dead or Alive Ultimate was a combination of Dead or Alive 1 and 2. Dead or Alive 1 was just basically... I think it was the Sega Saturn version of the game, uh, which is slightly better than the PS1 version. Um, and D uh, Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate, which was Dead or Alive 2, but things were changed a little bit. They made it slightly difficult to do countering. And this is where I started to not like the Dead or Alive series, because Dead or Alive 2 was great because countering was as easy to do as a normal attack or a throw. So the rock, paper, scissors were the same. In 3 and onwards, it's been slightly harder to do counters. Uh, like the timing's been a little bit more difficult and you've got to be more... And you've also got to... Before, in Dead or Alive 2, all you had to do was, I think, back and block was a mid counter back down and block was a um low counter and back up and block was a high counter but then they changed it to be like some were back some were forward block i think a mid kick was like forward block but a mid punch was still black back block and i mean that's come on that's just adding an extra level of complexity that doesn't need to be there because now it's not just a case of countering. It's a case of... Um, I have to now figure out whether or not his attack is a kick or a punch. Now I have to learn the moves of my opponent. And that's not really what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. Um, what else? What else? What else? So... Dead or Life 5... Uh, I did buy Dead or Life 4. I haven't I've hardly even touched it, honestly. Um, but I do have it. I haven't even unlocked the Spartan character. But Dead or Life 5, I never... I wasn't really interested. Uh, back when they had the, the PlayStation Festival, it was down to 25 bucks. So I was like, ooh, I might actually buy this. But then I heard about Dead or Life 5 Ultimate, and I was like, stuff this Dead or Life 5... If I'm going to buy it, I'll just buy this. Because it comes with like a whole bunch of new characters. And and one of the trailers they did, which introduced Ayn, which I didn't even realise wasn't in the game. Ayn's like one of my favourite characters. Um, and they introduced Ayn, and they basically made it look, apart from the fact that Hitomi's in there, uh, was in the, in the trailer, um, it made it really similar to Dead or Alive 2, and that got me excited, even though I know they just did that on purpose to make it look like Dead or Alive 2, but um, I, I'm not going to buy it when it first comes out, because it's going to be way too expensive for me, but what I, what I did hear about only this morning is that um, the, 
there's going to be a free-to-play version of Dead or Alive 5 called Dead or Alive 5 Core Fighter, which is basically going to be like what Tekken Revolution was. I talked about Tekken Revolution a while ago. Basically, you, the game's free. Um, you get tokens that accrue over time that allow you to play online and play the arcade mode. Uh, although in Dead or Alive, it looks like the story mode you've got to pay an extra 15 bucks for. And additional characters you also have to pay for. But guess what? One of the starting characters is Kasumi. It's my character. I don't care. It's all I need. Although I wouldn't mind playing as... Uh, is Momoji a character? I think she's a character. I wouldn't mind playing as her. But that's neither here nor there. Um, what time is it? Uh, right. So, um... Oh, I didn't even check what time it was. Six o'clock. Um, so, I might save the game. I'm dying, I think, but I'll save the game. Uh, where are we even up to here? This is getting, this is getting really confusing now, because the episodes of my arena are counting up. Now, today is 32, but it's the 2nd of September. I was considering na naming, like, numbering them the actual day of the year, but I, I guess I'll just continue doing what I'm doing, even though it's really confusing for me. The first month was easy as hell, because I just think, what day is it? It's the 7th. Oh, it's episode 7. Makes it really easy. But anyway, I'll just have to get over that. But yeah, Dead or Alive 5 uh, Core Fighter, or Core something, I can't remember what it's called, looks like a good game, and I'm really interested in seeing what it's all about. The other thing that I'm really interested, although I'm... This has made Koei Tecmo on my shit list now, is uh, Warriors Orochi 3 Ultimate. Um, so, basically, they've put Kasumi in the game, which I'm like, fuck yeah. Um, but now I've got to buy a whole new game. Oh. I don't know if it's going to get a Western release. If it doesn't get a Western release, I might buy it, because my Orochi, um... 3 is in Australia at the moment because it's the Xbox version. I don't have my Xbox. And I kind of want to play it. Um, and if I bought the PlayStation 3 version, well, then I could play it, couldn't I? Uh, and get all the, you know, all the characters. Um, it, the only downside is, of course, that I'd have to start from the very beginning again, which would kind of suck. But, um, I don't know. It comes out uh, sometime in September, so... I'll wait for it to actually come out, and then I'll just check to see if it will actually come out in the West. Because, I mean, obviously the voices are still Japanese, but having English subtitles is slightly nice and useful, because I can't... Like, it's... Warriors of Entry 3... Uh, the, the Warriors games is one of those games where, honestly, the vo I've always hated English voice acting in Japanese games, but I've discovered that in a game, especially in Warriors of Ritchie 3, more than any other Warriors game, it does pay to have English voices, because when you're in the middle of a battle fighting all these enemies and stuff, you don't have time to look at the friggin' subtitle to figure out what he's saying. I just accept what he's saying, which is probably fine anyway, because usually they just sort of say the same thing over and over again. Well, let's actually do something, because um, I think I've talked enough. I don't even know... I don't even remember what we were doing. What we were doing. Uh, oh, what was that? Oh, downstairs. I don't want to go downstairs. I want to go upstairs. Have I have I explored everything up here? I don't even know where I am. I don't know if I'm in inside the town or if I'm outside. I don't actually know. That looks like the green one. Looks like it goes upstairs. So let's go check it out. All right. Why, hello? Nobody? Nobody out here? Alright. Stop going, stop checking the time instead of the map, sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me, I know not what I do. Oh! That's an interesting room, it's not a, oh, there is a door, but you didn't actually have to go through it. How odd. <laughs> That's pretty odd. Uh, map, please. Thank you. Alright, keep going. Go north. Oh, here's another room. 
Another empty room more like it. Yes, well, you know how these things are. Does that mean it means there's only one room left in this area and then we'll get out of here? Right. Uh, here it is. Hello? Is anyone here? Oh, hello. Golden riches, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Oh, there's a man. Hey, there's a man. Oh, you stuck in a wall. Oh, no, there's a man. That's terrible. Oh, there you go. You're not stuck in a wall anymore now, are you? You're friggin' dead now. Oh, where are we now? I'm saving the game. Which is, uh, fair enough. Oh, uh, what the? You need to remap the friggin' buttons here, dude. I know. The numpad, which I mapped so that it would be more convenient for me, is proving to be more troublesome. Okay, this, this looks like the top floor. Uh, there's some rooms over here, so let's let's go left, 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 left. Yeah, just keep going left. It's a strategy that I've been employing in this new game that I want to talk to you about, but I might talk to you about it another day. Except I can't now that I've mentioned it, so let's talk about it now. So... Oh, the door's locked. Oh, they're both locked. Alright, so let's talk about a game. So, I was in... Wait, did I already talk about this? Did I already talk about Crime Crackers? Oh, let's talk about it now. So, I was in the, uh, the discount game bin at the local used game store. And I found this game for like 200 yen, which is about 2 bucks. Um... Uh, it's called Crime Crackers. It was a PS1 game. It was a PS1 launch title. And when I say that, I mean when the J the Japanese PS1 launched, which is like, I'm pretty sure it launched in Japan first before anywhere else. So this is like, not the first, but one of the first PlayStation games ever. Um, it's really hard to describe. Now, I wanted to record it, because um, at first I had no idea what it was and I was just going to go straight in blind and record my reaction to it. Which would have been good, except I don't know what it is, but for some reason I can't seem to... Hello. I can't seem to record PS1 games, at least Japanese PS1 games. I haven't tried um, uh, using uh, uh, Australian PS1 games, which I can't right now because my Australian PS2 is not here. Um, but, oh, you named it the same thing, you dumbass. Oh, whoops. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but, what, so, uh, yeah, I couldn't record, when I started recording, it just, the whole park just sort of craps itself and starts freezing and fast-forwarding and cutting sound out, and it's a real pain in the butt, which is a shame, because I kind of wanted, I got two games, I got Crime Crackers, and I got a loop in the third music game. Which is interesting, Lupin the Third. If you don't know what that it is, um, if you've ever watched a movie uh, called The Count of Cagliostro, uh, Lupin is the main character out of that. It's a, a fairly popular um, anime manga series uh, in Japan, um, and it's a it's a like a well, it's a rhythm game. It's just, it's like Hatsune Miku only with Lupin. <laughs> And it's like got all these remixes of the songs, although it the game the, the game's like really old, so the remixes are like nineties era remixes, which is like back when you know, before dubstep, before what what before before really like heavy bass existed. So it, they're not remixes in the tradition like in well no, they're remixes in the traditional sense, not remixes in the sense that you might think are remixes. But it's a fun game anyway. Um, really hard though. Well, at least at first. I, I guess it gets easier. There's a there's a bed there if you need one. Keep that in mind. Just continue going left. So crime crackers. Okay, I might. I did a video like just before I was about to start recording the game, where I showed some pictures of like the 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 box art and stuff, which you can find if you you know if you Google Google image it or whatever. Um. The, the cover, basically, imagine, okay, imagine Doom, right, this is a first person game anyway, but imagine Doom, right, but with really crappy graphics, um, a three character party system like Warriors Orochi, so you can switch between characters, 
Hello, where'd you come from, lady? Jeez, this came out of nowhere. Oh, uh, now I'm encumbered. No, you're not encumbered, your... Your inventory is full. Oh, no, it's even worse. Shaisa! Okay, hang on. I'm gonna drop something. No, that's not the button I wanted. Sorry, it's not the button I wanted. I did drop something. Um, so, yeah, so imagine that, and then... Uh, I can't remember what I said. I was telling Avo and Jack about it, and... Uh, I can't remember what I told them. But, yeah, it's just... It's a weird, weird game. But it's actually really interesting. There's, there's only two downsides to it. There's a lot, like, a lot of dialogue in between levels. And the dialogue ain't much to write home to. It's all in Japanese, obviously. And it just, you can't skip it. It just goes on for freaking ever. Um, the hell was that? Oh, hi. What's up? Let me just pick up the stuff, and I'll come and talk to you. The old stuck on the wall trick again, eh? No, you're almost dead there, buddy. Can you die already, please? Thank you. God. Man, I'm over encumbered. Well, I'm, no, I'm, I'm full. Full up of the good stuff. Stop doing that. I need that caress. I don't care about anything else. Just pick up that caress. Alright. Drop something. I'm sure these uh, paladrims aren't worth much. Oh, uh, don't change your friggin'. Sorry. Just drop that. Yeah. Drop that one. No, don't drop that one. I'll drop that one I need to. Alright. By the way, you should really save the game. Like, you should really, really save the game. Like, you really, really need to save the game right now. Like, really. Like, save the game, please? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Before I die. Thank you. And my strategy in Castle... In, in Castle Crackers, sorry. Your Crime Crackers is just constantly go left because it's literally, like... Do you remember the screensaver in Windows 95, which was like a little rat maze, and the you wouldn't you wouldn't control it; it would just constantly go left. Imagine that. <laughs> That's basically what the level design's like. It's really not so good, but the game is actually pretty fun. And once you get powerful enough, you you start owning like hell. Why am I here? I don't know. I want to sleep. Oh. Rest, rest, rest. It's probably going to be the next day when we come back. I think it is. It is now the third of Fire Fire. Tales, hey, it didn't do a thing for Tales and Tellers. Oh. Yeah, I don't know why that is. Well, let's save the game. Alright, well, when we come back, we'll uh, maybe run back to town, or maybe finish this area and run back to town, and then uh, see if we get some half price. Uh, Thank you, do that. But for now, my name is Leo, and I will see you next time.